Hi everyone, welcome to my Baby Lock Vibrant threading video. My name is Kathy and I'm part of the sales and education team at Pocono Sew and Back. In this video, I'm gonna show you how to thread your serger from start to finish. And I just wanna congratulate you because I think this is one of the best entry-level sergers on the market today, and it's at a great price point. A little bit more than some of the other entry-level models, but I really think it's more solid and gives you a wider variety of fabrics on which to stitch and get great results. So with that in mind, I wanna talk about some of the things that are going to come with your serger. First thing, you're going to get some thread cones, and the serger that I'm using already has four spools of thread on it in different colors. And they're just like your regular sewing machine spools of thread. And it also comes with caps. So you can use your regular spools of thread, but I think what you're gonna do is invest in four cones of white and black, at least those two colors. And I also recommend gray and tan because those four colors will go with a wide variety of projects that you're going to be doing on your serger. And your cones will sit on these cone holders. Next thing you're gonna get are thread nets. You're gonna get four thread nets for those finicky threads. You're also going to get two different size um, screwdrivers because at some point in time, you're gonna have to change your needles with the small one and changing needles often is a good thing. You're also going to get tweezers. These are essential for every serger owner. And you're also going to get a cover for your serger. All right, you guys, I am really excited to show you how to thread your serger. I hope you are excited to learn. Let's get started. Here's the front of the Baby Lock Vibrant. And just looking at this, we do have our telescopic wand in the back, which we can push down, but we always wanna make sure it's up when we are using our serger. That's really important. You have two linear tensions and you have two knobs. These are for your upper and lower looper and they are labeled. And this would be for your left needle and right needle. On the right hand side, you have your stitch length dial. And when we open up the cover, you just slide it out and then down. This right here is for, let me turn this to the side, your differential feed. So we can go up or we can go down or we can set it right at one, which is your average setting in which your front and back feed dogs are moving at the same rate. You still have your hand wheel. You always wanna make sure you turn your hand wheel toward you. In your supplies, you will also get these spool caps right here. And generally you don't use those if you're using the cones, but they have actually put them on the machine with the spools of thread that are included. When we turn this to the front, you will notice that here is your foot. These are snap-on, snap-off feet. The foot lifter lever is in the back and that will raise the foot. And there's a button in the back of the foot to actually remove the foot itself, much like your regular sewing machines. If I bring you in a little closer and just angle this down, you're going to see right here, this is a seam guide. And this is what I love about this serger. M on most sergers, this is an extra option that you have to pay for. Also in the back right here, you have a cutter. There's a knob right on the inside. When I press this knob, watch how that cutter right over here raises. Let's see, can you see that? There we go. And then you, whenever you want to cut your threads, you just push this down, swipe your thread chain around into the cutter, and it cuts the threads for you. The most exciting part of this serger has to deal with this button right here. When you go to thread this serger, push this down, this opens up 180 degrees. Do you know how easy it is to thread this serger? It is incredible because you have nothing that is obstructing your view, nothing which is obstructing your thread, guys. This is incredible, you guys. This is a real game changer. On the inside of the cover right here, there's places to store your limp brush as well as your threads and a couple other little parts as well, like your stitch finger if you're doing a rolled hem. The first part of threading or serger is looking at the telescopic rod in the back. And all these threads are going to have to go into the first thread guide. The first thread guide is right here. So what I'm gonna do, I got a little tangle in my green thread. So I'm just gonna take this off for a minute. Just move this out of the way. I'm going to put the spool of thread onto my serger and put the spool cap on. All right, and that's what you're going to use for the small, kind of like sewing machine threads, but you wouldn't use these for cones. And then all you're going to do is set it right into the guide. And you're going to do this for each serger thread. 
just put it right from the thread guide itself into that first thread guide, and it just lays right in there very easily. And we're just gonna go straight across from uh, left to right. Let me just get this one going. Got a lot of thread here. Let me just pull off this long tail. Okay, and there we go, we got them all in. I need to lift this all the way up, so make sure there's enough slack so that you can lift this telescopic rod all the way up. And now we're going to focus on these two guides here. This is for the upper looper and the lower looper. So I'm gonna take my lower looper thread, and before I even do this, I wanna show you one important thing. Notice that I've reset my tensions to zero, both for the two needles and the two loopers. That will open up the tension discs, and I'm gonna slide it right into that guide. It's snapped in, you can actually hear a little click. And then I'm just gonna let those hang. Now I'm gonna bring the camera down so we can focus more in on actually threading the loopers. We're ready to start threading the loopers. Now, I know your manual says to start with the lower looper first, but I prefer, I, I think it's like 95% of the time to start with the upper looper and there is a reason why. So what I'm gonna do is take my upper looper thread. Now this is in the guide, we snapped into the guide in the back. I'm going to hold my thread and floss it through the tension disc. Notice that all my tensions I have reset to zero. That will open up the tension disc. So once I reset them to zero, I'm gonna start threading the upper looper, pull it down, and then I'm going to look at the guides on the front for my upper looper. The upper looper thread is in uh, modeled by that green thread. So I'm gonna show you where these guides are. This is the first guide right here. It goes in from right to left, snaps right in. The next guide right here is marked with the green dot. It goes in from bottom to top and it just slides right in. This one right here is a little bit more tricky. It's not really, it's not hard. It's just a little different. So I'm gonna focus in down here and this is actually a little wire. So I'm going to flip my hands and hold it like this and then I'm going to put it over the top. A little hard to see there, right at the bottom of the screen. Over the top and it will just slide right in. Okay, there we go, whoops. Let me do it one more time. Just gotta get it under that little hook. There we go. And there we go, beautiful. Okay, so let me just zoom out. So it's going from this guide to this guide into this little hook right here. And now we have to put the thread into the eye of the upper looper. Now the upper looper is the one in the back and it generally races higher than the lower looper in the front. So I've already cut the tip of my thread on an angle with my scissors. Get that tip. And all I have to do is put it through the eye of the looper. All right, I got it right there. And this is where the teasers really, tweezers really help. I'll just take that tip, pull it right back, and there we go. You always wanna make sure that your thread does not get caught on anything. All right, so like I said, this guide, this guide, put it through this little hook, and then put it through the eye of the upper looper. Now we're ready to do the lower looper. All right, generally this is the trickiest part of any serger, but with the baby lock, it's super, super easy. So let me zoom out a little bit so I can show you. What makes it really easy is this button right here. When I push this down, the front opens up so it shows you all of the parts that you're going to need to see to thread your serger. So I'll move you back a little bit. I'm gonna take my lower looper. Again, you wanna floss it through the tension disc on your machine. Bring it down, this guide from right to left, snaps right in. And then we're going to look for the next guide. So it shows you one right here, which is right here. It goes in from bottom to top, snaps right in. And then we're going to look for um, this one over here. Okay, so this one goes in from right two left, and then there's one more which is right here. There's a little hook. Let me see if I can zoom in. There's a hook actually on the lower looper, and it's gonna go into this hook from left to right. And that is so, so easy. Now, we have to position the loopers the correct way because if you don't do this next step, 
then you could have a problem and your machine will always jam up. When you put the thread through the eye of the lower looper, okay, I'm gonna kind of hold this taut. All right, so I'll move that lower looper up and I'm just gonna make sure that I slide the upper looper thread. I wanna make sure that is behind the lower looper. Okay, so that upper looper thread was actually sitting in front and I wanna make sure it's behind. And then I'm gonna position my loopers so that the eye of the lower looper in front is actually above the looper in the back. So I'll repeat that because this is really, really important. When you thread your lower looper through the eye of the lower looper, that thread must come out so it is above the bar of the upper looper in the back and that is critical. So I'm gonna take my thread and I'm going to put the thread through the eye of the looper and it has to come out so that it's above the upper looper in the back. I'm gonna take my tweezers, pull it through and just make sure it's not catching on anything. And they're caught right there. And you guys, the lower looper is generally the hardest part of any serger, and this Baby Lock Vibrant makes it so easy. Just push your threads to the right, and now we're ready to start the needles. When I do my needles on the Baby Lock Vibrant, or really any serger, I always look at the last guide above the needle, and I look for where the opening is. Since the opening to this last guide is on the, guide is on the right, I'm going to do my left needle first so that left needle thread can slide all the way over to the left, and then when I do the right needle, there's less possibility of a kind of tangling in with that left needle thread. So I'll take my left needle, bring it down. And what I like about this one is I don't have to worry about sticking the thread through the hole. There's a guide right here and it slides right in. And then I bring it over the top and there's another little hook and it slides right down. Can't be easier. Then I'm going to take my thread, floss it through the tension just to make sure that it's in there. And then I'm going to bring it down to this guide, and then I'm going to bring it up over these guides and then down into that last guide on the right above the needle. So now what I'm gonna do is thread the needle, that's the left-hand needle, and then we'll complete it on the right as well. Let's move on over to the right needle again. We have the right needle here. Put it through that guide from right to left then it goes up and over and it slides right in via the hooks right there take your thread floss it through the tension bring it down bring it under this guide right here and above the next two guides then bring it down and into that last guide above the needle now we are ready to just cut our threads to a nice point right here and thread it through the eye of that right needle at this point our entire serger is threaded and really that did not take long at all so this just goes to show you how easy it is to thread the baby lock vibrant I'm going to um, leave this open for now because I want to show you when you thread your serger, I'm not going to put the foot on yet because I want you to get used to looking at the needles and the loopers together and how it forms the stitch on the stitch finger. I'm going to set my tensions to the average tension, which is, they have it kind of color coded here. So I'm going to set it to four, four, four and four, and this would be for your four thread overlock stitch, which is a standard serger stitch. Over here, I'm going to make sure my stitch length is right at that black dot, which is about, you know, 2.5. That's an average stitch length. And my differential is at one. So from here, I'm going to rotate my handwheel toward me, and I'm going to watch how the threads are forming on the stitch fingers. And if your serger is threaded correctly, you should not have binding of the hand wheel on the right, and you should be seeing those stitches form on the stitch finger, which is really good. All right, I'm seeing some good stuff here. So at this point in time, I'm going to put the foot on. I like to do up to 10 rotations of the hand wheel toward me, because like I said, if it's gonna jam, it's gonna jam early. And in doing so, you always prevent the opportunity that you could have, if you put your foot pedal on at full speed and you have a nasty jam, you know, you could throw your machine out of time. So you don't wanna do that. So I'm gonna put the foot on the machine. You gotta get this 
eggs, you know, right on. And that's usually pretty easy. And now we're going to do a sample to see what our tensions look like. So I can close up the cover right now. And this is beautiful. Right here, this is going to allow you to maintain a consistent seam guide. And on the front right here, there's a line for three eighths, five eighths, and seven eighths. So you want to utilize the seam allowance that is suitable to you. Now you could go to a quarter inch. Sometimes you just have to do some measuring with you know, your ruler just to make sure that you're getting it straight on. And then this will allow you to maintain a consistent seam allowance. So let me get some fabric and we'll get started with the sample. Let's test our serger now and see what kind of stitch we're getting. So I'm just gonna put my fabric here and I got a nice straight edge with the salvage and I'm just going to set my guide to where I want it to be. And notice that you don't have to lift your presser foot unless your fabric is really thick. It will automatically feed your fabric. So right here, beautiful sound, solid feel. We get to the end, we can stitch right off the fabric. Just let it feed out with your serger chain and then raise your cutter and just bring it right over the cutter. All right, let's check this out. Beautiful, beautiful stitch front and back. And that is just gorgeous. And look at your settings. All four, your um, threads are meeting right at the edge of your fabric. This is called a balanced stitch because when we look at the anatomy of a serger stitch, your upper looper threads, this is the top of your fabric, your upper looper threads are going across this way. On the back, your looper threads, your lower looper threads are going across this way. The red is your left needle and the yellow is your right needle. All right, so this is a perfectly balanced stitch when the upper looper threads are meeting the back lower looper threads right at the edge. Now, People have a problem with their sergers when they ask about loopies. I'm gonna explain why loopies occur and what they are. If I move my knife all the way to the left, now notice I'm playing with this knob on the left-hand side. So you will see that when I move this knob, this piece right here is moving to the right. And then when I move it toward me, it's moving to the left. But what is actually happening is the knife right here is moving. So where your knife moves controls how much fabric is being cut off by your serger. Now I moved it all the way over to the right. So let's see what happens. I'll take the other side of this fabric. And I should be getting loopies because I'm cutting off a lot of the fabric. And I am indeed getting loopies. And this is, this is something that people don't like. So look at this right here. You see these loopies right here? See how they're coming right out the top? People get really upset about this and they don't know how to change it. Well, I'm gonna tell you, that's because we have the knife moved all the way over to the left. So we're cutting off too much fabric. So let's move this piece over to the right and I'm gonna move it over all the way to show you what happens. All right, so let me just put my fabric back in. Move that over here. Keep. I want to make sure that I use my cutter. All right, so I did lose a thread along the way, um, but right here you can see that it is actually the seam, the extra fabric is buckling in the seam. And that's what happens when you're not cutting off enough. So I'm going to adjust my knife so it's somewhere not over too far to the right, not over too far to the left, and I will get a perfect stitch. I just did a sample which really shows you a little bit more about the stitch width. So right here, if I put my hand behind it, you can see the loopies on the left-hand side, and then you can actually see a jog right here where I move the knife out to the right and it cuts off less fabric. So then you barely have any loopies, pretty much the upper and lower looper uh, threads are meeting right at the edge. All right, you guys, so I hope this was helpful to you in how to use your serger, and I wish you many hours of successful serging. All right, you guys, enjoy your brand new Baby Lock Vibrant. 
Hey you guys, thanks for watching my How to Thread Your Baby Lock Vibrant Serger video. I hope you enjoy many years of successful serging with this awesome machine. If you need parts and accessories for your serger, any extra feet like the blind hem, cording foot, ruffler foot, and more, please visit www.poconosewandvac.com for all of your serging and your sewing needs. All right, you guys, have a great day.